Hey, good morning everybody. So yeah, I'm in Julian, California. It's like apple pie capital of the world. I just had breakfast at this beautiful uh, Julian Cafe and Bakery. They make this really good oatmeal and then they give you butter and raisins and cream and uh, it's just very plain. It's all wood. There's like artifacts on the walls. It's really nice. But I'm getting ready to head up to the California Wolf Center where I'm gonna start training as a volunteer to um, my, my hope is to, to get to know the wolves and their personalities, their families, and the pack, and how that pack works and their relationships. Um, a couple of years ago, we had a first wolf come over across the California border uh, from Oregon, and now there's a pack called the Shasta Pack. So in conservation and, and, and to help these wolves survive California, I've come up here to Julian to the wolf, California Wolf Center to begin learning about the biology and the lives of the wolves so that I can help legislators or the, the ranchers uh, protect the species. So they deal with the North American gray wolf and the Mexican wolf, which is very endangered. And it looks like they're gonna be releasing a couple into the wild soon. So I'm gonna put my GoPro on the front of my car and we're gonna get up there and drive into the wolf sanctuary. And uh, yeah, this is exciting. Okay, so we're actually, we got to the gate and there was a caravan of cars, so they escorted us. And this is, we're actually in the Wolf Center now. <sighs> it's exciting. I saw two of the uh, wolves over there running around, so we're gonna meet them probably here in a second. And uh, according to Kim, there is some genetics that the fish and wildlife or I'm not sure what the department but they want the, some genetics reintroduced back into the wild so they're gonna and it's breeding season mating season so that's exciting and it's beautiful up here the uh, drive is beautiful here I'll show you around a little bit so that's everybody they're going to the thing we've got to catch up okay here we go yep I heard a wow there must be a wolf <laughs> Or goldfish. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, right up there. I saw the wolves running around over there. You can see the chain link fence. That's one of the enclosures where they live up here. And here is the wolf center. We're going to walk into the wolf center right now. Oh, this is exciting. Wolf center, yay! All right, let's go in. There's a white truck. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm so excited. So the coyote's paw, it only goes about the same width as the arm. It doesn't extend beyond the arm for very long. It's a different story when we get to the wolf. About four and a half to five inches in length. These are snowshoes. You can help them walk on top of the snow. They're also exceptionally good for digging. That's something we wish our dogs did not pick up from the wolf. And they're wet as well. Okay, there's a wolf. But the tour that I'm taking right now, we're all, gonna, we're all on a walk. It's mating season, so they're being goofy. All right. Here we go. Oh, you can hear him. Hear him? This is the John Allen Nature Trail. So here's my group I'm with. We just had a tour. We had a presentation. I guess there's now two California packs. And uh, even one wolf that came all the way from Idaho. And OR7, I think, is his name. Um, they travel great distance to uh, find mates and to have puppies and start their packs and and survive so this is exciting here in California and for wolf enthusiasts everywhere so I know I'm in that class all right 
Yeah. All right, we're coming up on a, let's see, a, they're all over there looking. I'm going to go this way. Let's see, they're all looking over there. There, there might be a little. But here is uh, the Rocky Mountain Gray Wolves. We have Enoch, Ketchikan, Kiana, Kuma, Shasta is beautiful, it's like he's white, uh, Sierra, Sequoia, I really like Sequoia, uh, Tehama, Tom, look at Tom's eyes are beautiful gold, and Win 2, Win 2, okay let's go see what everybody's looking at. They were playing around. Not sure where they are, but this is the see the chain link fence. Oh, there we go. Okay, he's out. He's right here. So catch a can there probably weighs about hundred pounds. Hold on, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Here he comes. Let's see if I can find him. Here he comes. Catch a can. Catch a can. Beautiful. Wow. He's big. Is that catch a can? Yeah, this is catch a can. Love he's him. 11 as well. Uh, but as the alpha, he's still. The oh, he is the, the alpha. Boys. Okay. Um, he's about 100 or so. Here come some of the others. Now, oh, right? wow. So the one that is, I guess, closest Hi, everybody. to the fix right now is his is the alpha's brother, Anook. Same wow. Age, same litter. And then the two Hip boys that just showed up, the blonde one and the grizzled one, Get are Ketchikan's sons. Sequoia is the grizzled one, Win 2 is the blonde looking male. And right now, the wow. breeding season, you're seeing a lot of posturing and stuff. Like Sequoia right now tucked his tail and he's grimacing. Even though that looks aggressive, Beautiful. he's actually being submissive. That, gris that grimace is kind of a nervous reaction that he's doing. They came to say hi. In the area. And during breeding season, both the males and females can be more aggressive to each other. They're definitely wanting to reassert themselves as to their right and back. If you look at Wintu's tail, almost at the base of it, there's a black spot. These wolves actually have a situation It's there. beautiful. Dogs, too, that's called a on a fish. So when these guys are rubbing on the fence and things like that, they're actually putting the smell down that way. And then whenever dogs come up and it looks that's like beautiful. they're sniffing each other's Oops. butt, a lot of times that's actually what they're sniffing with that scent way. It there tells a lot of information to the other wolves or other dogs. It tells them the gender, the age, if they're healthy, if was made, all that stuff they can get. That tail out posture that Ketchikan has is kind of an assertive thing. So you see him and Winchu are both doing it as they trot around. So they're both showing that, hey, we're kind of higher ranking in this pack. <laughs> Winchu a lot of times like to pretend he's the one in charge until Ketchikan puts him in his place. <laughs> They're going over and greeting a couple of the girls right now. It's hard to tell which girl is over there saying hello. <coughs> so these were all males? Yes, everybody on the side we're on right now are males, and the females are on the other side. So pretty much all of our habitats have a divide in them. So if we're not breeding a specific habitat, we separate males and females for breeding season so that we don't have pups as a result. Right now, everybody that's in this pack Pretty related, so we wouldn't want them to injure. Um, so we have them separated. The alpha female is the one through the fence line that's got kind of the curved down ears. So that's Kiana. She's catch Ken's mate. Um, she's actually the mother of the younger boys that you've seen so far. Um, so it looks like they're all coming up and greeting the alpha female through the fence. One of her daughters over there. Is there with them too. See a little bit of going on with them. Not sure who that is so over there. It's another encampment. Right this happens okay. a lot, even when they're not in breeding season, just throughout the day, they kind of reaffirm their means. So even though we try not to make a direct association with us, these are smart animals. They're going to figure certain things out like that. <coughs> All right, let me see if they're Zeke and Terry are okay with us. Well, that was really cool.
Who is the alpha male over there? Uh, Catch a cat. They're big like Twilight. So that was really cool. Those wolves actually are very big. Just to have them come up to the fence like that. Ketchikan was the one that's really beautiful. He was the one I pointed to in the photograph. And now, we're coming up on a pair that, I believe they're mating. They're mating, so. And what kind of wolves are these? Are these gray wolves? Mexican. These are the Mexican wolves, right? Okay. So, I'm not sure if we're gonna get a, they like to do a lot of running around in circles over here. So, just see if, okay. There she goes. Oh, they saw us. Oh, she's like, well, I'm not too sure. Oh, goes the other way. So they have been mating the last couple of days. So if they do have pups, the pups would be raised by them here until they're mature. But once they're mature, then they would probably be put in areas that they see less. So wolves are very shy of people. Well, I guess what they're, they open the gate, so we're gonna go in closer. What are their names, these two? Zeke and Terry. Zeke and Terry? Yeah, the boy Zeke. Boy Zeke and the girl's Terry? Okay. Oh, there's the picture of him over there. So we'll go see. My guess is that they won't come over to us. Okay. Terry is the one in front right now. Oh, they are and right there. Zeke is the one that's following behind her. A lot of times during breeding season like this, uh, the male will stick right by her. Wherever she goes, he's going to follow right behind her and keep an eye on her. Okay, um, there. And Zeke and Terry have actually never bred before. Um, they haven't had any other mates in previous years. Uh, like I said, we've been in a while. One of those Zeke. Are taking the livestock food, so that's Terry. why we have that doesn't mean it's genetic. As long as um, he does produce offspring and those pups are ready to that range right through. Okay, so this is the um, Terry, range of the wolf well, right there. Um, came here with her about, I think, three years ago. So right at the Arizona Mexico uh, border. gray wolf as opposed to the other ones these guys are a lot quicker and a lot more agile than the other guys so our other wolves that fence line if you notice was shorter over there but those wolves are much bigger but with these mexican gray wolves this is a lot taller than this because there wouldn't be a single wolf in california if ranchers weren't okay with it because every wolf in california is living on ranchers property so the ones that are accepting of that are the reason we still have wolves here so some of those things that John was talking about inside, flagery, the range steward, and all those kind of things, strategies that help make sure wolves aren't taking their livestock as food, those are what we're trying to focus on now. Because we're not going to have wolves come back if there's not some acceptance there. Doesn't the government have a program where if your cattle, one of your cattle is taken by a wolf, you get reimbursed? Yeah, they do. And it's not just for wolves, it's also for mountain lions and for bears. Um, and it does put a lot of burden on the rancher for even that program. There are incentives for it, but it's very hard to receive them because you have to have pretty definitive proof that it was predation. 
Um, so part of that guy I was talking about that did the captures and everything, one of his jobs is a similar environment to their natural habitat. So uh, we actually opened in 1977, and we only had the other kind of wool, the ones like timber wool or the other names that you've heard. Um, but in the 80s, that SSP kind of approached us and said, you have some pretty good success with wolves here. You're a really remote location. And this shrubland, the chaparral and all that you have here, is pretty much what these Mexican gray wolves need. And it's very similar to where we were releasing in the wild. So we joined that program in the 90s. And because of how remote we are and everything here, then it works really well for these wolves. The Mexican gray wolves that are here adjust very well to go back to the wild because this is pretty much like what they're going back to. So that's part of why we do what we do with them. Do you run the ATVs around so they get used to them? <laughs> <laughs> Typically not. We're actually pretty uh, cautious with the behavior and, and activity of ourselves when we're here. Um, we have a really small staff, and pretty much for the feeding and everything that we do, we really limit how much our presence affects the wolf. So the two habitats that we've just seen with the Mexican gray wolves and the other guys, they're used to seeing tours. But let's say we took this tour over to our other Mexican gray wolves that don't see people so much. We'd be one, lucky if we saw them at all, but two, if we did see them, they would be stressed out. They would probably be pacing, running around, panting, and things like that, because they're just not used to seeing that many people. But that is what we want in a wolf to go back to the wild. The ones that are shy, and the ones that don't want to have anything to do with us, that's the kind of wolf you want back in the wild. Not the ones like Zeke and Terry that are comfortable coming up that close. But if they have offspring, hopefully that'll be the behaviors we're looking for. So that SSP's responsibility isn't just tracking the genetics and making sure those wolves are compatible that way together, but they also, once they find animals that maybe have the right genetics, they want to make sure they have the right personality to be a wild wolf. So whenever they track all that stuff. They talk to each facility that might have litters that represent those genetics and say, okay, you've got six wolves that were born last year or seven wolves born last year. Which ones do you think fit the right personality traits that could be back in the wild? Like, Carrie, for one thing, is kind of a nervous wolf. She paces a little bit sometimes when we have tours and things like that. But her sister Maya is the complete opposite of her. She had a strong attitude. She wasn't very afraid of people. She would follow us around when we were doing cleaning and feeding and things like that. So which one would you put back in the wild? The one that's nervous around us or the one that wants to follow us around? <laughs> so those are all things that we consider when we do some of those releases that we were talking about. Does anybody have any other questions before we conclude here? Yeah, so th it seems to me that I, I've been watching, I've been studying videos on YouTube of wolves and wolf dogs uh -huh. from second generation. I think California only allows uh, people to have a wolf dog that's a third generation, yeah. if, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there any mindset of the scientific community to, um, if, the, if the packs are going to grow, um. to reduce killing, to um, teach people to own wolves and to have them be a part of a family? Usually not, at least from our facility standpoint, because wolf dog hybrids are kind of an anomaly when it comes to behaviors and uh, instinctual traits that they might have. They work on kind of a sliding scale. So even an animal that, let's say you know that it's second generation removed, third generation removed from a full-blooded wolf, you don't know if its personality and instincts fit that 30% or whatever that is. They can be anywhere along the spectrum. And with an animal that is hybridized, you might not notice those things until a few years down the line. When those animals are very young and when they're pups, they may seem exactly like your dog puppy that you have at home. And then once they hit two to three years of maturity and things like that, and their hormones change, then they could be a totally different animal. And it might be kind of a shock to people. So those are some things that we actually do here pretty frequently. We actually get calls a lot of the time with people that have hybrids that say, hey, I've got a hybrid and he just totally is different now. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what set it off. And we aren't supposed to give any kind of advice on that, so we have places that we can refer people to that have more expertise with that. But a lot of times when they call it in, it's a two, three-year-old animal that's just completely changed on them. And those animals sometimes can behave, like I said, like a dog when they're younger. But then, let's say they have those wolf personalities or those wolf instincts. Well, wolves, even within a pack, there can be a very submissive individual. There can be a very dominant individual. And sometimes when they hit maturity, 
that's where they are trying to fit in one way or the other on the spectrum. So maybe you have a hybrid that's totally submissive and treats you like the head of the household, has no desire to, you know, be aggressive or anything like that. Or then you get an alpha. And then when he gets older, you're the one that he wants to challenge to be the alpha of the family. So there's a lot of <laughs> unknowns that go into that. So we usually don't advise on those kind of things, but it is a risk. And there are only certain people that are equipped to handle those kind Should of things. Should be certification. Should <laughs> certification to own yeah. one, sounds to me. Take them away. What do they do with these animals? Well, the unfortunate thing for a hybrid is if someone does have to turn it in, if you have to turn it in to, let's say, Humane Society or a rescue or things, most of them are not equipped to handle an animal like that. And frequently, euthanasia is going to be their go-to. But there are some facilities that we are connected with, like there's Lockwood Animal Rescue that's in Northern California. They are specifically equipped to handle hybrids and things like that. So they will not euthanize them, they will house them, but there's always many more animals that need that than they have space for. So it is something that is kind of working against them. A lot of times whenever you select for an animal like that, if you're not equipped to handle it, you're setting that animal up for failure. So any other questions you guys have? What's, uh, what other Western states have breeding programs like this? What's that? What other Western states have breeding programs like this? Just in California alone, there's also the Living Desert, so in Palm Springs. Oh, yeah. Uh, in Arizona, that's where a lot of the pre release facilities are. So like Sevietta, I can't remember if that's in the New Mexico side or Arizona side. There's a lot of other facilities in Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, in Oregon, they do have a breeding facility there. Um, and I think potentially in Washington, they also have one part of the so we're winding down here. So. Oh. Don't eat my nose. That was a great tour. Thank you. Thanks everybody for your time. A lot of good information on wolves, and these wolves will go back to the wild. And this facility is only for uh, wolves to be reintroduced back to the wild. And uh, yeah, let's go. Got to do the volunteer training next. So I'm sure get a lot more information, and uh, it's just been a thrill. Wow, those wolves were big. I thought it was in new Twilight. Yeah. Okay. See you soon. They they are really breezing over what has to happen for all of those things to come back to balance. So what, like the Yellowstone slide that we show. On the, okay, it this is a great. training it's site. A great selling point. Buffalo. But it. it Really takes a lot of the complexity out of it because they want you to be able to understand the, the moose, you know, but they don't yeah, fully elk. explain it. And also, those are the feeding, those are the main foods of the wolf. There, the, okay, I think the bison, the elk, and the, 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 uh, the moose. This is really there cool. Only like Here's the elk color, I mean, the wolf color. That's a, the battery, and around it is the I guess the thing that goes to. Put more there. I'm not sure what they call this thing. This thing where you could actually hear the ping so or the location of the wolf. As a result of other things coming into balance, what do we got here? We were like, okay, this is the point. Uh, we're ready to affect a few more things. Look at this wolf. So we actually affected some stuff too because we were actively. It's as big as my hand. Whoa! So that's one of the reasons we want to address it. Because they make it seem like, oh, yeah. So, so this is a wolf print, and that's my hand. This is a big wolf print, maybe. Wow, that wolf paw is as big as my hand. Is that a little wolf? Big wolf? There's an elk. Radiant color. Look at him. Which one to this is a wolf? Are one of these a wolf? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, this, have, is, this is this almost as big as my hand. Yeah, that's one of our, that's one of the ones from the first pack we saw. This is oh, actually one of our can. wolves here. Yeah. Yeah, this would be about Sequoia catch can size. Wow. Um, that's cool. So this is like the first pack we saw. Yep. That's average for them. It's, and this is average for the Mexican gray wolf. So North American gray wolf, Mexican? Yes. Okay. All right, and who's this guy over there? This is an African spotted hyena. Hyena, there we yeah. go, okay. <laughs> so he's up here. And monkey? Was it, this, this is a grizzly bear. That's a bear. Yeah. Oh, that's a grizzly. Yeah, let wow. me close the door so it doesn't let her. That's a grizzly, wait, this yeah. is cool. So we're gonna have, uh, Hold on a minute. Just like when we, 
right? Yeah. His jaw comes open. Yeah, so they are two so different pieces. Careful. They are two. Okay. Yeah. So here's a grizzly head. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, I didn't see any grizzlies up in the middle, so black I saw. Yeah. But I did backcountry for backpacking. It was awesome. They had a wolf pack up on the hill, and then we probably just got back. What part of Yellowstone were you in? A sleuth, sleuth, sleuth creek. I'm trying to think about, okay, what year did you visit? Is this the last year? Okay, I can't remember what the name of the pack is in that territory. So the, the most famous ones are the ones that are the Lamar Valley pack. So there's been the Mollies, there's been the, the um, Druids, the Druids yeah. and uh, there's another pack that was briefly there that I think got overthrown, but I can't remember. It was the first pack of yeah. Lamar Valley. They were called the, I can't remember what they were called. They changed actually the name of the Molly pack from a different name. So, like, they were something, then they were kicked out, then they became right. the Mollies, and then they retook it. Right, right, right. <coughs> That's the well, North American Grey Wolf he's holding right there. It's yeah. really cool. And what's this one over there? This is Same? an extinct dire wolf. So this is even bigger than the modern wolves. Yeah, yeah. And the reason it's colored differently is to look like it, it has tar on it. Because most of the places we found them are from the La Brea tar pits and, and oh, other really? tar pits. Yeah. Wow. So like when you're at the San Diego a, Zoo, this they... This is artifact. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Let me see the size of that one. They're almost the same size. Yeah. They're about... Pretty, this one's a little bigger. Yeah. They have brain areas. This is the brain here? Yeah. And so his sagittal crest is even bigger than the modern one because these guys ate things like mammoths. Yeah, we, yeah. we don't have that in our head, our scalp. What would you call them? Dire wolf? Dire wolf, yeah. So those guys... Here's a little Mexican wolf. Compared to a modern day wolf, this was let's the last say that the tallest wolf I have on site here was standing next to me, Sequoia, would probably be up to about there at the head. Dire wolf would probably be about there, um, and the modern wolf can be the one he's holding. They can be modern wolf about 125 Hello. pounds average. That's, oh. that's pretty big for modern times. They used to be a little bit bigger, but 125 is about the average. Um, dire wolves could be 200 very, plus. Very so they would be maybe 175 or so average. Let's go to the gift shop and go shopping. <laughs> okay, it's a gift shop. Like that school group. Oh, the wish shop. Oh. Here's the wish shop. Wolf tooth. Oh, that's what I want. There. Blank cat. Wolf. Wolf. It's going to be a Oh, that's Journey's book. Journey is the first California wolf, I think in 91 years. Came across the border two years ago. Very exciting. Wolf passing. Tags and patches. Wolf paw print. It's a big print. Little, little wolf pack. There's a wolf pack right there. There we go. That's cool. Alright. First off, Oop, wolf hat. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, so that's it. And uh, that's our wolves. So the whole mission of the California Wolf Center is to reintroduce wolves back into the wild. And um, that was the California, not the California, that was the North American gray wolf pack that you saw. And uh, so beautiful. And um, some Mexican wolves, the two Mexican wolves that I think that uh, were uh, sort of towards the left were breeding. So we didn't want to cause too much stress in their lives. And these animals are just absolutely beautiful. And we have two packs now in Northern California, um, all the way from Idaho. Uh, the, uh, the little solo travelers found mates and had puppies, and now there's packs up there in Shasta uh, called the Shasta Pack. Um, 
So yeah, I'm just excited to be a volunteer and uh, did my orientation today at the California Wolf Center and got to meet Catch Can and uh, all their names. I don't remember all their names, but uh, I'm going to become very familiar with them and I'll tell you, I'll bring stories to you of their lives and what they're doing up here and their personalities and who's doing what and uh, just help you become familiar with the wolf pack um, and the ones that are being introduced. They, they think that possibly there's going to be more puppies this year. They had puppies last year. And it uh, looks like the Mexican wolves are breeding, which is a really exciting thing because there's so few left in the wild. And they're doing an amazing job up here. I'm really just honored and privileged to be up here and, and, and now be a part of the wolf conservation effort. And uh, help them to get along with ranchers and not kill the cattle. And um, there's it does a really great job for the ecosystem, especially up in Yellowstone where I was over the summer. Um, the herds of elk and you know they were just killing all the the, the vegetation and stuff and, and when you do all that uh, all the other little animals don't you know thrive very well so uh, when the wolf the ecosystem the wolf brought back to Yellowstone it's showed a remarkable improvement um, to the life for all of the animals and plant life in Yellowstone and uh, so we look forward to um, working with Northern California and the ranchers, making sure that the wolves and humans coexist and peacefully, and uh, that are uh, it's, it's just an exciting time in uh, the wolf life. So thank you for being with us. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.